Our CBS News correspondent, Elaine Cobb, is on the Champs Elysees. She's been listening into this press conference. Um, Elaine, uh, a couple of things that are interesting here before we sort of unwrap everything that we've just listened to from uh, Francois Molin. One, um, Karim Sharoufi uh, was born in France, so that's something that's sort of interesting in a, in a time where people are talking about preventing immigration um, to France uh, from, or in, even in the United States, from mm -hmm. countries where people might seek to do harm to the citizens of that country. This man was born in France. He lived in Saint-Denis, which is just outside of Paris. And also, what we're learning is that he was a career criminal. Yes, exactly. Um, People like Marine Le Pen have been saying we need to throw out all the foreigners who are on the terror watch list. But this man was not a foreigner. He's French born. And um, some of them have been saying we should get rid of the dual nationals as well. He may have fallen into that category. We're not sure. But the Paris prosecutor gave quite a litany of what he's been up to. He's been in jail four times, but for quite considerable time and um, mostly for attacking police um, and for attacking prison guards. Also, for attacking a fellow inmate when he was in jail at one point so clearly he has a violent past and um, he attempted to kill two police officers um, in and was given a jail sentence in 2005 but he's been out of jail since October 2015 um, in 27 in early last year rather he went to Algeria the investigating magistrate who was following him said and um, he told the authorities that in fact he went there to get married um, they're not convinced that that's exactly what was happening but he's been traveling as well I think uh, a lot of people will be wondering as they hear about all the contact that he's had with law enforcement, why he wasn't on any particular sort of watch list, particularly when he said that he had gone to Algeria. Well, uh, from 2015, when he was released, they decided to put him under observation, under surveillance, and he was, in fact, being monitored. But as happened early this year in February, when he was picked up by police, the prosecutor said that he had threatened police officers, so they were looking at him. They, exa they searched his home. They held him in custody and questioned him. They took his cell phone. They looked at his computer material and they couldn't find any evidence of him visiting any of the extremist websites, nor could they find any indication that he was actually planning to act. And so they had no evidence to hold him, but they did keep an open investigation um, for terror charges, which meant that he was sitting on that watch list. But of course, it's a huge watch list, and now there are so many people that are ra raising flags for them that they can't follow everyone <laughs> all the time. And there has been pressure that once someone has been kind of cleared by the police on something that unless there's a major concern that they kind of move on to more important targets or ones that are flagging a little more. Um, Elaine, I think um, for an, our American audience here, um, and what we're showing right now, our viewers, is a live picture right where near your live shot position, Elaine, of people that have uh, set up a makeshift memorial for that police officer uh, there on the Champs Elysees. But um, a lot of our audience here in the United States will perhaps be surprised that a man who attempted to assassinate a what the prosecutor called a person of a public position, a police officer, would receive a sentence of 15 years to life and be out of prison in 14 years and then go back several times. Um, and it's not a question of whether or not he was radical because as Francois Fillon says, they're not even sure that this radicalization uh, happened uh, until very, very late and probably until just recently, but that somebody like this was still walking in the streets. And I know this is probably a larger discussion about the French legal system, but what insights can you give us? Well, that is certainly something that hit people as the prosecutor was running through the long list of what he'd done. And, you know, the clear evidence that he's anti-authority he hit the you know he tried to kill the police officers officers in what's already been reported as a very vicious attack and he went on a bit of a spree over the a few days back in the early 2000s um, and tried to kill three other people so 
you know, he's got this in him. And he, when he, he was in prison, he attacked a prison guard uh, and he was given another sentence for that. Um, he also attacked a fellow prisoner. Now, all of these sentences clearly were running concurrently because he was allowed out. Um, it is typical in most places that once you've served nearly the length of your sentence if you you get off a few years for good behavior so he wasn't let out inordinately early from that first um, sentence but the fact that he was sentenced twice more while in prison that does sort of raise questions about why was he not held a bit longer yeah indeed well Elaine Cobb thank you very much for bringing us up to speed